This lesson deals with mesh analysis with a circuit that has current sources. You can find these notes in the course ebook in chapter 3, starting on page 16. Let's again revisit a problem we did earlier with note equations and see if we can solve it with mesh analysis. In this problem previously, we had two current sources, 3 milliamps and 5 milliamps, and we solved for the node voltages V1 and V2. We'll again use our four-step algorithm, and I'll arbitrarily pick mesh currents. I'll call this I1, I2, and I3. We'll always pick them clockwise, but you can call any one I1, I2, or I3. Just don't change it once you start it. Now in this problem, I can see that I1 is equal to 3 milliamps, and that I3 is equal to 5 milliamps. Although I've got three mesh currents here, I do know two of the three. I only have one unknown. I just have to write one equation to solve for that one unknown. Step two of the algorithm is to apply Kirchhoff's voltage law around each mesh, which doesn't contain a current source. Now the reason for doing this is that the voltage across the current source is another unknown, just like current coming out of a battery. I don't want to go around this mesh or this mesh. I'm going to go around this mesh. Okay, let me assign voltages. Now this has already been called V1 and V2, and I'll call this V3. These are arbitrarily selected. Node voltages are always positive at the node, negative at the ground. Go around the mesh. The rise in voltage is V1, the drop is V3, the drop is V2. Now what is the voltage V1? Well, it's 1K times the current I1 minus I2. Again, I1 agrees with the notation we've picked for V1, which is current in this direction, and this disagrees with it. So we get I1 minus I2 times the resistance of 1K. The voltage across the 3K resistor, plus to minus, and it's implying a current in this direction. That's going to agree with I2. So it's going to be I2 times 3K. Pick this direction, so which implied a current in this direction. That's going to agree with I2 and disagree with I3, so I2 minus I3. But again, we know that I1 is 3 milliamps and I3 is 5 milliamps. So let's multiply this out. So 1K times 3 milliamps is 3 volts. I also have 1K times 5 milliamps on this side, which is 5 volts. I'll put it on your side of the equation. Bring the things that multiply I2 back on the right-hand side, and that's going to be 1K, 3K, and then another 1K. It's 5K. 8 is equal to 5K times I2. One equation, one unknown. Step 3 is to solve for the mesh currents. We have only one here, and it's just going to be equal to 8 volts divided by 5K, and that's 1.6 milliamps. And lastly, to find the node voltage V1, the current in this direction would be 3 milliamps minus the current I2, which is 1.6 milliamps, times the resistance of 1K is 1.4 volts. The voltage V2 in this direction is going to be I2 minus I3 times 1K. 1.6 milliamps minus 5 milliamps times 1K is 3.4 volts. These are the same results we had on page 6 when we did the node voltage method. In the problems we've been analyzing with mesh and node analysis, which method is better? Well, depending on the problem, it may take less work to solve the problem using node equations versus mesh equations, or vice versa. Sometimes more unknowns doesn't mean more work. So in this last example, we had three mesh currents, but two of them were known. So it was only, only one unknown. We did the same problem with node equations, and we had a two by two matrix. The best advice I can give you is to look before you leap. Look a problem over before you start writing equations. To think about how many equations you have to really write to solve for the unknowns that you're interested in. On some test questions and homework problems, you'll be told which method to use. So you need to learn all the methods in the course. Of course, it's always best to do the least amount of work, but no matter which method you pick, you're still gonna get the same answer. And this is an example of mesh analysis using current sources.